Stay cool. Hit the button, baby. Thor News presents. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. I'm your host, Thor. Where are my brown dwarfs? I'm talking about certain astronomical phenomena. Thor News presents. Party dance time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 2016. So let's talk about some dumb shit happening really far away. I'm over at the Daily Galaxy. We are talking about the oldest planet in the Milky Way, question mark? Question mark, because, like, who, who could really know? Like, you can't even tell me how many planets there are in the Milky Way. So how could you tell me if one of the ones is the oldest one? You know, it's like, if you found 55 people in New Jersey, and then found the oldest one, was like, okay, that's the oldest dude on Earth. You can't even give me a straight-up catalog of all the planets in the Milky Way. So it sounds goofy. And scientists have some obsession with dating. And I'm not talking about scientists dating women or men. I'm talking about scientists dating planets, stars, asteroids, air, everything. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, they seem to be obsessed with it. So let's talk about this. A globular cluster might be the first place in which intelligent life is identified in our galaxy. You gotta love might physics. Like, yeah, we might find a giant statue of Jessica Alba on Europa. Yeah, you might. Probably not, observed. Roseanne Di Stefano of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics in January 2016. You see, globular star clusters are extraordinary in almost every way. It's kind of like science says when a giant cloud of gas and dust gets too heavy for itself, it collapses upon itself and creates stars and solar system. So I guess one giant cloud of dust and gas collapses upon itself and just creates like a zillion baby stars. That is what a globular cluster is. I don't know, globular doesn't seem like a very romantic word, and stars can and should be romantic. So, I would like to officially put forth my displeasure on the word globular. I'm talking about stars. The globulars, which are found in the halo of a galaxy, contain considerably more stars than the less dense galactic or open clusters, which are found in the disk. They're densely packed, holding a million stars in a ball, only about 100 light years across on average. No, wait, what if that globular cluster isn't a ball, but it's flat? You ever thought of that? Just an idea, I was throwing that out there. Probably to agitate people, because I'm agitated. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't pass along this shit sandwich I've been handed to you. That's not fair. They're old, dating back almost to the birth of the Milky Way. They're still alive? Wow, that's crazy. And according to new research, they also could be extraordinarily good places to look for space-faring civilizations. See, in July 2003, the Hubble helped make the astounding discovery of a planet called Paps Blue Ribbon, B1620, 26B. Yeah, I know the title says something else. I'm naming it Paps Blue Ribbon, whatever all those numbers are, because it's way cooler. All right, two times five, and this planet is 2.5 times the mass of Jupiter, which means it's gigantic, and it's located in globular cluster M4, shown in the image above, taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. It contains several tens of thousands stars and is noteworthy in being home to many white dwarfs, the cores of ancient dying stars whose outer layers have drifted away into space. See, that's how cool stars are. They can supernova off all the junk that ain't working for them anymore and then turn into something completely cool, like a white dwarf star. I think it's like caterpillar to butterfly. All right, the Pabst Blue Ribbon B1620-26 system lies around 5,600 light years away. The globular cluster M4. That's a bad sentence. The Pabst Blue Ribbon B162026 system lies about 5,600 light years away. The globular cluster M4. What? I don't know. Bad grammar, science boy. Directly west of the red supergiant star Antares. If you watch Antares at night, he's been freaking out. Him and Sirius. It's like they're doing some sky dance or something. In constellation Scorpius, its age, wow, see another error, you guys should edit this shit. Its age is estimated to be around 13 billion years, almost three times as old as the solar system, exclamation point. All right, I think it's cute, science thinks it knows exactly how old the universe is. Pretty goofy when you think about it, man. It is also unusual in that it orbits a binary system of a white dwarf and a pulsar. It's a type of neutron star. Be careful when you talk about neutron stars, people flip out. The Antares region, shown at the top of the page, includes an unusual orange reflection nebula. Interstellar dust clouds illuminated by the bright orange star Antares. Globular star cluster M4, center shown below, a star shrouded in dust clouds. 
a red emission nebula, two blue reflection nebula, and a triple star system. Oh, that's all that is right there? That pretty picture? That is wonderful. So scientists found an unusual white dwarf system that might contain the oldest planet in our galaxy. Oh, that's so amazing. The existence of a 13 billion year old planet, if in fact it still exists. What the hell? I'm reading an article about a planet that may not even exist anymore? And if it's gone, how do you know it existed in the first place? Highlights the fact that our solar system exists in a universe that is estimated to be between 13.5 and 14 billion years old. Now I'm telling you, what I need to do is I need to make one of those like personal carbon daters that I can sell to everybody so you can go around carbon dating everything to verify all this stuff. But that's just a pipe dream. A few intrepid astronomers have concluded that the most productive to look for planets that can support life is around dim dying stars, white dwarfs so prevalent in globular cluster M4 shown above. In the quest for extraterrestrial biological signatures, the first stars we study should be white dwarfs, said Avi Loeb, a theorist at Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics and the director for the Institute of Theory and Computation. Theory and computation go so well together. Asterisk, lol what? Even dying stars could host planets with life, and if such life exists, we might be able to detect it within the next decade. Oh really? This encouraging result comes from a new theoretical study of Earth-like planets orbiting white dwarf stars. Researchers found that we could detect oxygen in the atmosphere of a white dwarf's planet much more easily than for an Earth-like planet orbiting a sun-like star. Wait, so they haven't found a planet, they did find a planet, I don't know. When a star like the sun dies, it puffs its outer layers, leaving behind a hot core called a white dwarf. A typical white dwarf is about the size of Earth. It slowly cools and fades over time. This is all theoretical and computated. But it can retain heat long enough to warm a nearby world for billions of years. Since a white dwarf is much smaller and fainter than the sun, a planet would have to be much closer in to be habitable with liquid water on its surface. First of all, you don't have to have liquid water. Like the universe and Mother Nature is extremely creative with all of our elements. So you can have one thing a little different and another thing a little different. Like as far as we know, methane could act as water on a different planet under different light, under different circumstances. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyway. All right. So this story seems to be kind of dud for that. I apologize. I mean, they didn't find a planet. Now we're talking about another planet. Oh my God. Hold on. James Webb Telescope. Now check this shit out. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope scheduled for launch by the end of this decade. <laughs> promises to sniff out the gases of these alien worlds. Finally, an accurate description of the James Webb Space Telescope. It's here to sniff alien farts. Easy joke, I know, but whatever. Loeb and Mazo created a synthetic spectrum, replicating what the James Webb Space Telescope would see if examined a habitable planet orbiting a white dwarf. Okay, so they simulated the James Webb Space Telescope and then simulated what it would see? Man, my brain is blown. I cannot think anymore after that. That is just too much wacky bullshit for me to buy. All right, peace out. God bless everyone. I apologize for this article.